my attention is now taken to the construction of the wings. As with the fuselage, the components are pinned to the plan and glued together with bolter cement. When set, unwanted parts are trimmed away. In order to shape the trailing edge to a neat tapered edge, the bottom batten of my building board, and that's a bit of a mouthful, makes a useful sanding guide. You may have noted that this batten is slightly proud of the board's surface. This is mainly intended to stop items sliding off, but here it has another use. By simply turning the structure, and sanding on the other side of the batten, both ends of the trailing edge are easily tackled. Construction of the outer wings is quite straightforward but the top stringer should be left for later. Tailplane and fin follow the same procedure. Then a final inspection and clean up. At this stage I wanted to deviate again from the designer's plan. I wished to make the undercarriage detachable. For this, I needed to cut four short alloy tubes which would form sockets for the undercarriage legs. I used a wing main spar offcut as a depth guide and rolled the soft tube back and forth under my scalpel blade. The four socket tubes were soon ready to glue with a little balsa packing into the centre wing structure where the spars and ribs join. I now had to join the outer wings to the centre section. The plan requires that each outer wing has a dihedral of 25mm from where it joins the centre section to its outer tip. To accomplish this, I cut two stiff card jigs as wingtip supports and pin them to my building board. I could then glue the wing sections together and add the top stringer spars to stiffen the join at its correct angle. Oh, just prior to fitting those spars, I had laminated extra thickness to the wing tips and added strengthening gussets to the wing roots. Next, I continue with my idea to modify the undercarriage. First, I measure and bend wire for the two main legs and slot them into the forward sockets. Then, to each of these legs, I bend and fit a support strut. 
This will be soldered together later. The bottom and side patterns of my building board make a useful support for sanding the wingtips to a nice rounded finish. Back to the undercarriage. I cut to length some bolster strips which will be glued and bound to the undercarriage legs. These will act as standoff supports for the imitation cover panels. Cotton bindings are glued over with bolster cement and the panels, which are cut from card, are then glued in place. The propeller spinner is supplied as a simple black plastic shell. This will need to be carefully fitted to the propeller and to do this I decided to use a roughly carved piece of polystyrene which I glued into the spinner using PVA adhesive. You cannot use balsa cement for this, as it will dissolve the polystyrene. Having let this set overnight, I carved into the plug and cut slots into the plastic spinner shell so that the propeller will fit snugly centred. I then backfilled behind the propeller with crumbs of polystyrene glued together with PVA. Twenty years ago, Godfrey has shown me a darn good way of covering that eaglet with tissue. First, the outer framework of the item to be covered was given a generous coat of clear dope. The next step was to cut the tissue slightly oversized and soak it in water, blot off any surplus water and the damp tissue could then be gently laid in position and the edges doped over. This fresh application of dope would set into that already on the balsa frame. When the whole lot dried off, the tissue had shrunk tight and was ready for a final coat of dope. Well, that was all very well then. However, I quickly discovered that the tissue supplied in the kit was not up to that procedure. Eventually, for the tail surfaces, the fragile tissue was pasted on with PVA adhesive. When this was dry, it was lightly sprayed with water, and when that was dry, it was treated with a coat of clear shrinking dope. When dry, this dope provides nice crisp edges, which can be sanded to a neat finish. Although for the tail surfaces I was able to use the tissue supplied with the kit. For the rest of the model I wanted something more substantial. A visit to my local model shop rendered the answer. For 45 pence I bought a sheet of what we used to call rag tissue. This stuff is very strong with a close mat of fibres. I was ready to get to grips with the wing centre section. Now this material really does the trick. However, not wishing to push my luck, I decided to use PVA to stick the damp tissue to the outer edges of the area to be covered.
I applied some firm pressure on the glued edges to ensure good contact. Getting a little carried away with the process, I also covered the fuselage and doped both components which were then hung to dry. It's very satisfying to trim away any surplus tissue. A good sharp scalpel slices through the dope stiffened fibres with precision and ease. This super tissue had made the work a pleasure and I covered the remaining surfaces using it in its dry state. The tissue edges that will overlap onto already covered areas are torn rather than cut. The outer wings are now ready to be doped 